Let's replace your display file with HTML. Hi, I'm Joseph. On our previous episode, we discovered how to customize user desktops. On this episode, we'll explain how to configure initial boot options for the Chameleon framework. So let's get started. Now log on as an administrator and select the Assistant Scheduler option. Assistant is a job scheduler. It has the ability to automatically start jobs, schedule jobs, initiate jobs on demand, and can also activate jobs based on user-defined events. The Assistant Scheduler is automatically initiated when the ZBoss subsystem is started. You can manually start the Assistant subsystem by executing start subsystem ZBOSS slash ZBOS. Ideally, this subsystem should be started when your IBM I starts. If the ZBoss subsystem is not active, the Chameleon framework will not be available. From the Assistant desktop, click on the Auto Start Task option. Then select the Queue Startup task. The key parameters for this job, in addition to the others, are the job user, the job description, and the job queue. These key parameters will allow the scheduler to run properly. It is strongly recommended to keep these values as they are. Click on the Procedures tab, then the Script button. Grab a corner and drag it down to enlarge the text box. This is where features can be added or removed as the framework starts. The start TCP server type of HTTP for a specific port may be added by copying the current Z60000 to other pre-configured ports. As shipped, there are 30 pre-configured ports, all inactive except the port 60,000. For example, to activate 60,010 port, copy the 60,000 port and change the port ID to 60,010. Like so. The 30 pre-configured ports are from 60,000 to 60,050 in increments of 10, and from 61,000 to 61,050, 62,000 to 62,050, 63, and 64,000 to 64,050. Like so. By default, each port will serve as many as 40 clients by the HTTP server. However, Know that if a server job runs a program that crashes badly, the entire server job may crash, taking all the client jobs up to 40 by default with it. So do protect your code so that it doesn't crash your program as much as possible. It is a good idea to assign a separate port IDs for developers from the general user community. An administrator can assign a specific port to individual users, but be sure that this startup job has been changed to start the port that you are assigning. When a new user accounts are created, the port ID is automatically assigned based on the least assigned port IDs of currently active ports. Due to this algorithm, when a new port is activated, user accounts will be more likely to be assigned to the new port ID until the port assignments are spread out more or less evenly. Also, be aware that if you deactivate a port, all those who are assigned to that port will no longer be able to log on to the desktop. The Rex TCP server must be activated and the SSH and FTP server is recommended to be active. The Collections tab will allow you to prompt the commands used. 
To prompt the command, simply click on the command line, like so. Then click Confirm or Cancel to return. Back on the editor, the Session Logs tab will display the history of the task. Job logs can be saved onto IFS folder if Save Queue option is used to capture the IBMI job logs on the main parameter screen. Back on the Auto Start Task page, you'll see that there are other Auto Start tasks that will become active when the ZBoss subsystem is started. The AJAX monitor provides seamless communication between CGI client and server. The iSpy task collects system performance data. While this service is not required for framework to function, without this service, the user dashboard will not work. The Mali server is required service as it monitors users logging on and off the framework and also provide message delivery service. The Save Queue server provides the ability to save output to all assistant tasks. The output or spools are saved onto IFS folder if tasks are configured with a Save Queue option. The QWhen monitor provides the ability to initiate assistant tasks on a specific event, such as when a particular job has been submitted, activated, or completed, normally or abnormally. This feature can be very helpful when there are dependencies among various submitted jobs. This type of event-driven dependent jobs can be set up using the on-demand tasks option. Back on the assistant desktop, select the schedule tasks option. The ZBoss IPL task is set to shut down the ZBoss subsystem and restart it automatically at 1.30 local time. It is very important to reboot every day to free up the resources used and reset the framework. Those browser sessions that were still connected will be timed out and a message session expired will be issued. The old UUID, event clear and save queue clear jobs are housekeeping jobs and the iFind data job will collect object information from the system for the impact analysis tools. This is a helpful set of tools for your developers. We will explore the impact analysis tools in more detail in the future. And finally, the iStatus data job collects system usage information. This data is shown from the file system disk usage option from the main desktop. Back on the assistant desktop, select the on-demand tasks option. Select the XREF initialize task. This job, if initiated, will clear out previously collected data for the impact analysis tool and restart the collection. To set up an on-demand job that will be triggered by an event, we need to first allow job notifications to be sent to the Q1 monitor. This can be done using the Task Exits option. From the Task Exit screen, click on the job notification, then click on the Exit status and start the program. When enabled, jobs that are queued, started, or completed 
in the ZBoss subsystem will be sent to the QN monitor. However, upon IBM I system reboot, all jobs that are queued, started, and completed in any subsystem will be monitored by the Q1 monitor. Now to complete the on-demand job with an event triggers, let's go back to the assistant desktop and select the task editor. Click on create button, select an on-demand task and give it a name. I will use example one. Confirm to create. Now select example one from the list and change the status from hold to ready. Update the description as needed. The job user must be an IBM I profile with the ability to execute commands. Then click update. Now click procedures tab and click the script button. In the text box, enter send message sent by example one on demand task true user and your own profile now don't forget the quotes and click update Click Cancel to return to previous screen. Then click the Triggers tab. Now click the Do When button. And give it an event name. For action, keep on End. And select Batch Type or Job Type. And enter Job Name. For user, use your current user ID. The execute task parameter should already be filled in with the current task as the task to run. So what this will do is, when a job named example1 is submitted by your current ID and completes normally, the procedure defined in this task will be executed. The procedure we entered is to send you a message. Now press the confirm button, then refresh as suggested. To test this on event task, log on to a green screen with your current user ID to a command line. Then enter a command, and then enter a command, submit job, send message, message as a test, to user, DJP, or your current profile, and the job name, which is the important part, is the example one or the name that you gave it when you created that on event job. The job queue, DSGL, single job queue, and ZBOSS library. And execute. Now enter command DSP MSG. When you display your messages, you should see a message coming from the on-demand task. It would say, sent by example one on on-demand. This is because when we submitted a job, 
example one using your current ID and when it finished normally, it triggered the on-demand job, which has an event to be triggered by the completion of example one. Hence, sent by example one on-demand task message is issued to your message queue. This means you can initiate any other job by the action of the first job. For example, when the job is queued or started or completed, either normally or abnormally, it can initiate a secondary job, which in turn can do the same thing for additional jobs. So if you have a day-end job process, for example, that are dependent on one another, you can daisy chain these jobs only on a successful completion, for example. With that, let's go back to Assistant Desktop and then summarize. So when the ZBoss subsystem starts, it will automatically initiate monitors with disgust, activate framework port selected and readies the HTTP server jobs to listen for the requests on those ports. When user enters the URL with a specific port that is being monitored, the HTTP server responds with a logon screen. This outlines the initial boot cycle for the Chameleon framework. On this episode, we've discussed the initial program load options for the Chameleon framework. On our next episode, we'll discuss how to install the VS Code, which is free open source software that will allow you to edit and compile your RPG and C++ code on IBM I. I hope you'll join me. As always, if you've enjoyed this episode, do smash the like button, and I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel. I am Joseph Park, and I will see you next time.